Hello. I tell you something I did. Ray? Something bad. She runs down health. Father to son. Father to daughter. He's gonna kill Mickey. It has been. Yo, Jack, who you liking to make the playoffs this year? Man, you know my Cowboys, man. I think we in, we in it to win it, man. We just so up and down, man. I'm kind of worried about my team. But uh, I think it's some other teams that's going to squeeze in there that, uh, that I think was going to make it, like Philadelphia. Yeah, I think Philly just clinched. My Niners squeezed in. Hopefully we can upset someone in the first round. But, but I'm definitely looking forward to the playoffs this year. Why you ask, Matt? Well, the NFL playoffs are here, and DraftKings Sportsbook is kicking things off with a huge offer. Countdown to Super Bowl 56. New customers can get 56 to 1 odds on any wildcard team to win their game. Bet just $5 to win 280 in free bets if your team is victorious. You heard it right. Bet just $5 on any NFL playoff game, and DraftKings Sportsbook will give new customers an additional $280 in free bets if the team they choose win their game. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you still have something to play for this wildcard weekend. Everyone can play for huge cash prizes with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Football Contests. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. It's really that easy. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, use the promo code SMOKE, and get 56 to 1 odds on any NFL team. Bet just $5 and win 280 in free bets if your team wins. That's promo code SMOKE at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Welcome back to another edition of All the Smoke 2022. Happy New Year, Stack. Happy New Year, my brother. What's good? Man, I can't call it, man. Just uh, got done with ESPN. Hurried home. Excited about our guest today. Yeah, me too. WNBA legend, North Philian, NCAA champ, Olympic gold medalist, the highest paid female coach is it in sports or just basketball? I'm thinking sports. So say that. Welcome, yeah, man. Say welcome that. to the show. Say that. Don, Don say that, Stanley. Dude. Say that, dude. <laughs> man, that's well, that, crazy. That, that's not in sports. Serena, Serena tops that big time. <laughs> no, I'm talking about as far as coaching. Coaching. In basketball, coaching? Coaching. Yeah. You be, got you're that. the highest paid women coach, period, though, right? No, no. I think uh, Gino at, at UConn. Okay. All right, well, you up there. You making good money, man. Congra- <laughs> congratulations, first and foremost, on that deal. Obviously, your, your, your track record speaks for itself, but I love to see that you're rewarded because it's, it's giving women now another visual. You know, you, you did it in, in, in the sports. Now you're succeeding in, in, in coaching, too. So we definitely want to congratulate you on your big deal and all this success. Thank you. Appreciate that. And, uh, and thank you all for having me starting this 2022 seat. Uh, uh, episode off. Uh, I, I watch y'all. I mean, I listen to y'all. I, I appreciate you guys giving raw thoughts and and letting us in the the inside of your your thoughts and your vision. And that's that's pretty darn cool. So if you watch, so if you watch, you know you're my favorite uh, female player of all time. Yeah, Jack yeah, you spoke told me you a lot. That. Yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. I say that. I say it all the time. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> That's what's up. So again, seven year deal has you through the 27, 28 season. Um, looking back on your journey, uh, starting as a child, a player, um, now a coach, and and what do you make of all this? Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I love basketball. Like, I, you know, it it was I, I never cheated on it. Like mm. it was the one thing that I I was loyal to. Um, I didn't care what anybody else was doing. I was singularly focused on on sports, and it wasn't just basketball because I played I played football, tackle, like on the cement. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I played baseball, <laughs> softball. I mean, we, I used to live in the projects. Yeah, we, I used to live in the projects and there were like row homes around this big field. And this big field had, it had a basketball court, it had a softball field, it had a baseball field. And then it had just space. And when you have just space, you know, you're resourceful. You, you create like we could get we could get a five gallon can of paint. And we used to draw not straight. We used to paint lines yeah. to create like a track. Yeah, so right. I mean, we had like the Olympics out there in the middle of the project. So, I mean, I, I was doing what all the neighborhood guys were doing. Mm. And it, it certainly is it's paid off. So it's a cool what? feeling. Were you the only girl back then battling with all the boys? Only girl. Yeah, only girl. Okay. Now you not only do you get ridiculed from the guys, but their girlfriends thought I was I had an alternative motive. Like <laughs> yeah, I'm just out there to play, like, right? Yeah, really. Like, do you do you understand? Like, I'm I'm playing with like they're dirty and sweaty at this point. They don't look good. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. How how's the season going so far, in South Carolina this year? We're doing pretty good. We actually, um, you know, we 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 were the number one team in the country for a while. We took an L last Thursday to Missouri, um, but something just happened today where uh, the new poll came out and and they actually they 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 continue making us the number one team in the country. I I haven't mm-hmm. saw that before, but we played a tough schedule. Like we played probably six out of the ten top teams in the country, so. I mean, it's good to see the, you know, the decision makers in women's basketball, especially the poll, treat us and respect us in that in that manner because it is not often felt in that regards. Well, yeah, I, I think you kind of earned that respect. Last season, you took the team to the final four. You lost. You lose to Stanford. Um, what are you building on that different this year than last year? I know you're still trying to get healthy. My favorite, Raven. Raven is still dealing with an injury. You know what I'm saying? My girl, um, the first ever player in the All Boys uh, High School All American game. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Raven. Uh, but um, what are you going to change this year? What are you working on this year to be better uh, from last year? Well, I um, appreciate you shouting out Raven because it came at a time in which she, she was down. Um, the injury mm-hmm. just happened and you send the video out. Appreciate that, Stax. Yeah. But, but we, we lost in the final four to Stanford. Uh, we we had two opportunities to 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 win the game. So yep. one mm-hmm. one one player had a layup, uh, she missed it. We had another player follow it up and try to mm-hmm. try to lay it in, and and it's that margin of error that we're working we're working with like mm-hmm. that inches. And when we when we practice, uh, we practice from that margin of error. When we play, we keep that margin of error in mind because we don't want that heartbreak of, of if we're that close to competing for a national championship, we, we want to make sure that we, we cover, we're checking off all boxes when it comes to just making sure that it, it, it doesn't come down to that. But if it does, it's familiar to us. All right, let's talk about how important women's basketball. Uh, I'm honored to this month to be uh, hosting the first ever uh, high school Elite uh, Women's Basketball Showcase hosted by NBA player. I'm the first to do it, and I'm hosting one um, this in January uh, in a couple weeks. What, tell me, tell me how important uh, female basketball is to you. We had a great relationship with Kobe, and, and he spoke on how important it was to him, and it's, it, it's just as important to us. But to you, for somebody who's being a uh, somebody who started it, uh, a founder, and, and somebody who a lot of people look up to. And, in the, in the basketball space now, being one of the highest paid coaches, how important, important is, it, is it to you and to see how it's growing? Well, I mean, I've, I've always, like, I, I'm old school. I, I've been around the block. You know, I've played on every level. Um, and I, and I, as you were saying that this was the first and you were a part of it, I, I go back. I was, I was in a, and I'm not, I'm not trying to pump up myself, but I was in a, <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was in a Spike Lee commercial with Lisa Leslie and Cheryl Swoops, and they interviewed us about that particular commercial. And in that commercial, I, I said, basketball is basketball. Like, it, it doesn't matter what gender. Mm-hmm. Basketball is basketball. Like, mm-hmm. you you all played at the highest level. I played at the highest level. Mm-hmm. Their, your thrill was as much as my thrill. 
Right. You know, your your defeat was hit me as hard as my defeats. Mm-hmm. Um, you put in the work just like I put in the work. Right. And it's it's genderless. If if you pour into something, something good's gonna come out of it. So mm-hmm. the fact that you're you're stamping your name on it is gonna give it some validity. Um, the fact that you're the first and hopefully won't be the last, right. it's gonna open up some doors for some some other um, guys to to pour into to girls basketball because at at the end of the day it's basketball is just basketball. Thanks. Let's talk about your upbringing. Your mom started in South Carolina, moved you guys to Philly. Um, what was it like growing up in Philly? One of five children. You said I mean outside, obviously playing outside with the kids and stuff. But what was it? What was your family dynamic like? Um, this, this, I got to give you the, the back story to my, my mom just, my mom was born and my, my mom and dad were born in South Carolina. And the reason why my mom had to travel to Philadelphia was because, um, my grandmother, her mother sent her to a, a, like a butchery to get some, some meat. And, um, the, the butcher went to the back and brought my mother back some meat from the back. And my mom looked at the meat and was like, no, we, you know, we don't, we don't want that meat. We want the meat that's, that's here, you know, that I see. Mm -hmm. And, and the butcher was like, no, you're going to, if you want this meat, you're going to take this meat. And my mom is a sassy. She was a sassy lady. Um, She wasn't going to take, you know, what looked like spoiled rotten meat back to, Mm -hmm. back to the house. Mm -hmm. And, and that butcher told her to get out of his store and to never come back. And when you live in the South, when they say those words, it, it doesn't mean don't ever come back to the store. It means you better get out of town. Mm-hmm. That, that was back in the day. So mm-hmm. my grandmother heard about the interaction and sent my mother to Philadelphia. And this was a time in which I wasn't born. So my mother was in Philly for a long time. And then, you know, she had five kids and and she built her life around being in Philadelphia. And I think it was probably the best move for 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 us as children, um, because we Philadelphia was a lot more progressive than it was here in the South back in that day. And, you know, I'm, I'm allowed to you know, I was allowed to, to play a sport, to, you know, be in the city in which um, there, there's so many so many resources and outlets to play. And, and I, I grew up in a household that, that was, that was disciplined. Like, like I was afraid of my mom. I was afraid of my mother. Like she thought at times when I was out in the big field playing at all times of the day and night, she would, she would sneak up on me and just to make sure that I was where I was and then once she saw that I was persistently going out there, she she was she was good with it. So Philadelphia, North Philly projects. Um, Raymond Rosen. Movie. Raymond Rosen. Raymond <laughs> Hank Gathers. Hank Gathers grew up the same the, yeah. the same uh, projects. Yeah. Obviously, you developed you know the love of the game and the and the passion playing outside. But when did it kind of narrow to just basketball? How old were you then when you just knew okay, I could really do this. You know, when I when I was in the eighth grade, I I received a, a letter from Dartmouth, like Dartmouth, the, the Ivy League, mm-hmm. and um, and it you know now that I'm in coaching, I know that letter was just a a, a, a camp invitation, mm-hmm. but to me it was interest. To me it was like a you know what is a ray of hope of possibly going to play in college. And, and that's when I knew that I, I probably need to leave these other sports alone and let, let me concentrate really on basketball. And, and basketball was a, you know, was a sport I could play year round outdoors, indoors. And I, from, from that letter on my concentration was fully on just playing basketball. What was it like for you and your family when Nike did the mural ahead of the 96 Olympics. A um, hundred foot, for those who don't know, a hundred foot mural 
uh, born in Philly, grew up on the corner of Twenty Fifth and Diamond. What how what did that mean to you specifically? And then also, how did your family feel about it? Well, I mean, Nike Nike is you know forward thinking. Um, I you know I, I played I played with household names: Lisa Leslie, Cheryl Swoops, you know Teresa Edwards. All I mean, they are well known. I was just a point guard and probably just took a more um, service role. Just service. I just want to win. It doesn't matter how it looks. I just want to win. Um, but after having several conversations with Nike and the, and the powers that be about sneakers, because I knew sneakers, um, I think they they took a liking to me. Uh, I mean, I I was just real. Just I was just talking to them. You know, I don't. I didn't know if that was hurting their feelings or whatever. Because sometimes when people want real conversations, they really don't want you to say what's on your mind, right. mm-hmm. but you're asking. So I gave it to them and then they, you know, they, they told me about the A story mural that we're going to do in my hometown when, when the USA national team was going to play a, an exhibition game there. And then I, you know, I told my, you know, I told my family that it was going to take place. And, you know, when you grow up in the projects, you know, you, you're not really fully understanding what that is like right. I, I really didn't so when we when we got into Philly the national team and and they, they the ceremony was going to be the next day I did I, I actually had somebody drive me by there mm. just so just so I could check it out and see and then I was I was floored because I mean it, it is in downtown Philly um eight stories like it's is larger than life I had to tell my mom to, to meet me down there the next day. My mom is still, my mom was a Southern woman. You know, she did not drive, didn't have a driver's license. So she took public transportation everywhere. But if you ever, if you ever were, was in a car with her, and you were driving, she could tell you exactly what's everything. small, every, yeah, everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. So, yeah. so when she got down there, we were already there. So I saw her walk up. You know, and it's it's a proud moment. Like it, it brought her to tears um, to see her a baby girl up on the eight story building, a, a building that she she's on the bus and she rides by. Right. You know, you know every week. Mm. So it was, you know, it was just it was just it, it, incredible because again, I wasn't the one of the ones that I didn't have a shoe at first. Cheryl was the first one that got a shoe. Lisa got a shoe. So you know, you're and I. And there was no jealousy or anything like that. I I actually don't like the spotlight, um, but I I did like the spotlight when in my hometown right, because it right. it just yeah. gives Means so more. much more to all those people in in, in the projects. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Aspiration. Right. With that said, it was said that your mom didn't really know how nice you were on the court. When did your mom and your family really start kind of understanding your special talent? You know, you know how family members are. They they don't really really want to give you a just do because they want to keep you humble. Right, you can't right. do it until you do it right, to them. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't think my mom really knew um, how good I was until probably, probably when I, when I started getting like, like hundreds of, of letters from colleges mm. um, and they, they were coming to the projects right in the mailbox. And I think that's when she knew um, she had a pretty talented daughter. Um, and, you know, with my brothers, like my, my brothers and sisters, you know, we, we didn't, we didn't have like college aspirations because we knew we couldn't afford it. Mm. So nobody was really thinking about that. So, you know, in the, in the neighborhood, yeah, they knew I was pretty good. Cause I was playing, you know, I was I was being one of the first to to play in the pickup game, so they knew I was pretty good, uh, according to the you know the the neighborhood. But as far as nationally, you know my you know my skill set wasn't tested, um, and and they they couldn't see just how good I was until I started to play in you know in college and, and got on the AAU circuit. And even then, they didn't even come see me playing the AAU circuit because it was. It was out of town. So um, college is probably when, you know, I was uh, I, I was actually deemed pretty good then. <laughs> so once college becomes a goal and an option, 
when did, you know, obviously there's no WNBA when you're in college. Um, making that jump overseas is a possibility, but, you know, that was something that's always, you know, questionable for certain people. When did life professionally as basketball, when did that kind of start coming into your mind? And, and what were your plans seeing that you had a lot of success in college as well? I mean, I, I wanted to play basketball for as long as possible. Like I, in 1990, I graduated in 92. I tried out for the Olympics, the 92 Olympic Games, and went to the trials and got cut. Now, you got you got to understand, like, in 1992, I was college, college basketball's player of the year, like two-time player of the year. And I went to the Olympic trials, and, um, and that was the year, if you remember, that's when the pros were allowed to come into the Olympics. So... And the original dream team in 92. Yeah, yeah. So I think that the, the women's program wanted to mirror the dream team and, and getting all professional players. Mm -hmm. So that, that left me off because I didn't have any international experience. Um, so I got cut. Uh, and the reason why I got cut, because when, when you're on the, when you're trying off for an Olympic team, they do actually tell you, they give you some feedback as to why you didn't make the team. So, the two things that I remember them telling me was one, I was too short and two, I didn't have enough international experience. Now, now mind you, you know, one other play on that, that made the team was shorter than me. So I don't know how they came up with, I was too short, but I, I, I say this, if I didn't have that, you know, that disappointment at that time, I really wouldn't be able to appreciate being a three-time Olympian, three-time gold medalist. So sometimes, you know, life throws yeah. you a curveball. You, you just have to deal with it and, and not let it get you down. It should just actually fuel you to want right. to get better. I mean, I, I yeah. only I only wanted to do two things when I was growing up in the projects because because these are the two things that I saw women play. And that was in a national championship game in college and the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Those two things I just wanted, I had a goal. And then probably the the overarching goal when I realized that this was achievable was I wanted to be a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. Those are like the three selfish things that I wanted. Other than that, I didn't really set goals. And I and I still to this day, I, I really don't set goals. I just kind of let 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 my path be as divinely ordered as it is. I like that. Since you were speaking on the Olympic team, three-time gold medalist, tell us what it was like on those teams kind of gaining, getting the respect. Do you feel like you guys feel like you got the respect you deserved? Um, because, again, women's basketball has been fighting for footing, you know, since its, the, it's inauguration. Uh, but you guys had an exceptional team, a bunch of Hall of Famers, three-time gold medalists. Do you guys feel like you guys got the respect? or you, Was it always a constant, like, we got to go get it every time we go out there? So, I mean, back in, back in, like, my first Olympic Games was 96. And because we were hosting it in Atlanta, um, we, we trained for, for 15 months prior to the Olympic Games. You know, when it, when it, whenever a country hosts the Olympic Games, they, they invest. They invest money in the teams and sports because they want to do well. So they invested in our team. They they gave us fifty thousand dollars for that year, and that was that was pretty that was pretty good for me. For some of the other players like Teresa Edwards and Katrina McClain, who was who was making six figures over there every year, it was a huge pay cut. But that they're from Georgia, so they wanted to play in the Olympic Games, and um, you know, playing with playing with that particular team. I think that team was the team that kind of spearheaded women's basketball and put it put put us at a place both collegiately and professionally just giving us or well, we were the guinea pigs of of professional uh, mm -hmm. professionally because after that after we were done with that that olympic games two professional leagues were birthed the WNBA and the ABL and i believe 9 out of the 12 players on the olympic team played in the ABL and three of the other players Play, actually, the three players were Lisa Leslie, Cheryl Swoops, and Rebecca Lobo. They opted to go play in the WNBA. So it was cool. Like, the more the merrier. Like, if the more 
professional women's leagues that start up, the more job opportunities there would be for women. And I was all for it. UVA, University of Virginia. Um, you left there. You was three-time All-American, finished as Virginia's all-time leading scorer and all-time leading assists. But both of those have been broken since, you, since then. Um, how did it feel um, going to UVA, and was it any other options besides UVA? Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I was recruited. I was, I was actually the number one um, high school player in the country. I, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't even, I don't know how you do that, but they, they chose me. I, I never actually, I went on maybe one AAU um, circuit, like one. I actually put, participated in the very first one. Um, so I was, I was the high school player of the year. So, I mean, every, every school came after me, like, like hundreds of them. Um, I chose to, I chose to go to Virginia for, (laughs) for two reasons. And one of them, obviously I didn't want to go to a school that had already won a national championship because I wanted to be a part of that legacy. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing was, I mean, it's the strangest thing that that attracts us, but I didn't want to go to a school that had like traditional dorms, like you know, like you go, you 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 got a roommate, and then you got to take your bucket down the hall and go shower and oh, you know, yeah, 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 that like like that. Would, I mean, I lived in a project, so I wanted I wanted college to be a step up. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I had to share a room with my sister. And that's as far as I wanted to go. Share a room with someone. Yeah. And then Virginia had these dorms where there were four rooms. You share the room with the roommate. And then you had you had two showers and you had two two stalls. And then you had like a common area. So it was it was almost like an apartment. Right. And then the other yeah. schools that I the other school that I was very serious about was Penn State. And they had the old the old old school dorms and I I <laughs> I really couldn't do it. So the non-negotiable was the dorms. So I went to yeah. I went to Virginia. I, that's a crazy. Uh, I've heard a lot of reasons <laughs> why people pick schools. I've never heard stuff like that, but that's good. I feel you because I was <laughs> I was at UCLA. We had, they had us set up nice there, and I couldn't imagine like some schools they had like. But in summer school one time, I had the situation where you had a roommate and you had to walk down the hall to the shop. I'm like, hey, I left summer school. <laughs> Couldn't do it. Nuh-uh. You end up winning a national championship in 2017 with South Carolina. Do you feel like that made up for you not winning one while you was playing, from you being so good and not bringing one back to UVA? Yeah, it, it actually did because it took it took almost like 27 years to win one, and I had to get into coaching to do that. Mm-hmm. But it, it was it was so special. It was so special that um, when we won. I, I made sure that that every like former player of mine, because I coached at Temple and I'm coaching at South Carolina. When we won every every player prior to 2017, I got them a miniature a miniature national championship trophy. Let's go. Let's go. Um, I got all of my Virginia teammates miniature national championship trophies. All of all of the people that. Coach with me at Temple in South Carolina. I got the miniature national championship trophies because this this was a dream far beyond 2017. Right. Um, and I had I had teammates and I had former players that believed in that dream that we we didn't get it done. So I I want I didn't want them to miss out on that opportunity of feeling that. And then on the back of it, I put their name and I just said because of you. Ooh, Simply. That's, that's really that's dope. dope. You, don't hear, you don't hear stuff like that too often. That's what's up. I, I knew she was a real one. I told you that. I knew that. <laughs> hey, so tell me this. What was the feeling when you went back for your jersey retirement? Mm, um, I, I don't even remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't remember uh, that. Like, like, I mean, really, honestly, I know that, that stuff... I mean, there it's nice, but I mean it's nice, Chill. but I I mean I, I wanted Hall of Fame. Mm. Ask me about Hall of Fame, like ask me about mm. Hall of like that is yeah. that, and I'm not trying to take any. I mean, I'm grateful, mm. I'm right. grateful, right? But there are just things that are like near and dear 
Like you're, I'm in a Hall of Fame with the greatest of the greats. Yeah, but that's what you played for. You played to be one of the best. Yeah. Well, talk about it. What's it like? What's it like being in the Hall of Fame? It's, it's, I mean, it's it's cool. Like I, I don't always go back to the ceremonies, but when I do go, like I feel proud. Like I feel like I belong. Mm -hmm. And 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 I started a. I started an autograph collection, so I get I can get all the greats autographs when I go there. So it's mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Like, mm -hmm. like I, I I mean I got a, I got a pretty extensive collection of of Hall of Famers. Well, it, 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 it's kind of hard for some people to even think about that because like when people ask us about Kobe, like when high school. His mind was different. Like me, I'm just trying to get to the NBA and and figure it out and make some money, take care of my family, and buy me a whip and some change. You know, that's what I'm thinking at the time. You know what I'm saying? But Kobe, as a teenager, we knew what he was thinking. I'm going to be one of the best ever. So it's very few people can understand your understand your train of thought. You know what I'm saying? As you was growing up playing basketball and your mind frame, you weren't thinking just uh, make it to the WNBA. You was thinking I'm going to be one of the best ever. That, that's it. That, you know, I got a Kobe story. I, I mean, I Kobe was was at Lower Marion when I was in Philly training for for the Olympic team, and he used to come to the he used to come practice with the Sixers. Like John Lucas was the coach. Mm -hmm. John Lucas used to work me out. Like I got a I got a cool John Lucas story. I, I I've had knee trouble my whole career. Um, during that fifteen months that we were training for the 96 Olympic Games, I used to go up to St. Joe's where the Sixers used to practice. And the Sixers weren't really that good at the time. So John Lucas, his his job was on the line. Like every day you were reading the paper, you know, it could be any day now that he gets fired. But he saw me, he used to ask me, why am I up here? And I told him I, you know, I had to have, I got to get surgery because my knee. He was like, look, let me, let me, let me send you to uh, uh, Dr. Andrews in Ooh. Birmingham. Damn. Like he That's paid good. for me to go Damn. to see the, 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 he wanted me to see, to get seen by the best of the best. Right. Right. Now I, I didn't like what Dr. Andrews told me, but um, <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, like it was, it was 95, 95 or 90, early 96. I went to Dr. Andrews and Dr. Andrews, you know, he did the x-rays. He looked at me and I'm, I'm 25, 26 years old at the time. And he looked at him. He was like, how old are you? I said, I said, I'm 25. He was like, he said, you, you, what are you trying to do? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get on the Olympic team. Like I'm trying to play. He was like, okay, well, you, you play this Olympic Games and then you need you need to hang it up. You know, if you want to run around with your kids later mm. in life, then you need to you need to hang it up. Mm. I had to get out of his office. <laughs> you wasn't trying to hear that. I wasn't trying to hear that. So but if I listened <laughs> to Dr. Andrews, I probably would only be a one-time Olympian. Now right. I walk with a limp every day, but right. but, but I'll sacrifice it. that. It's, yes, it's, it's worth, worth it. it. It's worth it. <laughs> yeah. 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 What yeah. was your uh what was your Kobe story up there too? Kobe used to come. I used to work out at St. Joe's. Kobe used to come and work out at St. Joe's and he used to get in. You know, it's probably a little tampering because he wasn't supposed to be working out with any protein. Mm. But he was he was out there, you know, oh. like like Kobe had his I mean, his nose was up, chest up. Like yeah. mm. he felt like he belonged. He would he would talk smack. He would dunk on people. He was a killer. Like mm. at 17 years old. Mm -hmm. oh, and you, the see, you know, to see his career and, and 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 how much he impacted the game and this to see when he went into retirement, how much he impacted, you know, the, the girls' basketball and women's basketball mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. by just by being a girl dad. I mean, his dad, his legacy lives on in, in mm -hmm. women's in women's bat in the women's basketball world. I know. I know what he's done for the NBA and around the world, but there's a special place in our hearts uh, for Kobe Bryant and, and Gigi. Yeah, rest for in sure. peace. No, he he definitely <clears throat> took that first step because obviously, you know, as as NBA players, we're fans of you guys. But I think getting the outside respect from maybe 
particularly NBA fans. I think when Kobe stepped out on that uh, on that limb and and really stood for you guys, I think that it, it kind of seemed like the tide had changed and you guys started getting talked about more. And now it's really everywhere. And I'm, I, I just heard the other day they're starting an all women's version of something like ESPN that's just going to be strictly on women. So I think it's come so far and it, you know you're you and you know some of your your former teammates had a lot to do with the foundation of that you know what i mean so yeah. it, it's amazing to kind of see where it started uh to where it's gotten and, and heading definitely heading in the right direction now so long, i mean it's long overdue i mean you you're going to be good at whatever you invest in you are right. i mean we we can look at like like i mean I, I i don't have any children but i got a dog i mean he's pretty cool pretty cool cat right like mm-hmm. If if I didn't train him, like if I didn't like train him to be livable with me, mm-hmm. you know, he, he he wouldn't be worth anything. Right. But but right. now that I've trained him up and, you know, he, he, he tells me when he's got to go out and potty. He tells me when he's hungry. He te- I mean, he looks into my eyes like he loves me. like he gives me signs like, mm-hmm. but it's the same thing. It's the it's the same thing. If you pour into women's sports, there's something good going to come out of it. I mean, look at I mean, you you mentioned my salary, and I don't really you know. Again, I don't I don't really do it for the money, but it's nice. It's big. That's big yeah, still. It's, it's big, but I mean, that's the the very thing that's gotten the headlines was the was the money, mm-hmm. and for for me, it's more of this for other people. Like I'm right. I'm gonna enjoy it, but they're, they're, you know, they're investing. The University of South Carolina is, is, is investing in their women's basketball coach. And I'm just hoping that other, you know, other sports, other professions, other just in, invest. Now, I mean, I think I've earned it. Mm-hmm. I think I've earned it. Like, I'm not, I, I wouldn't ask earned. for this. I wouldn't ask for this 22 years ago because I right. ain't earned it. Right. Mm-hmm. But 22 years later and the sustained success, um, yeah. And you got to strike when the iron's hot too. So timing is important as well. But also yeah. just being an aspiration to to girls looking to take that route. Like you said, you took the sports route. Now you're taking the coaching route. And so many people want to be involved in sports, but they may not have enough to be an athlete. But there's so many other ways to stay around the sport. And you, again, you coaching now is another way. So I think that's dope. So coming out of college, there was no WNBA yet. So you had to uh, you know go overseas. Uh, for a handful of years, uh, you get back and the talk. So what was it about the ABL and then eventually the WNBA for you, which you made home? So so during the during that Olympic training year, um, like 95, um, the ABL, the ABL founders came to our team and they pretty much asked us to be a part of it. They said they were going to pay us one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Um, a year to be founding members and all of us, all 12 of us agreed to do it because we didn't know anything about the WNBA. They didn't tell us about the WNBA to a, a few months later. Um, and then once the WNBA decided that they were going to start a league, three of, you know, the, the, the more, you know, profound names in, in our game, Lisa, Cheryl and Rebecca, they chose to go, to the to the WNBA and then mm-hmm. nine of us chose to stay in the ABL because we you know we made a commitment to it and mm-hmm. and I did it because I made a commitment to it and then after spending two years um, in the ABL I decided just for for personal reasons like I had bad knees and the ABL was like the traditional basketball season so it was eight months. So I wanted to play for much longer. And the WNBA is like four or five months. Yep. So I said, I need to hang my shoes up with the ABL and go to the WNBA so I can play a lot longer. And then I actually I actually made the right decision at the right time because, you know, that, that following season, the ABL went under. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, so, I mean, it was, it was pretty cool that I, I got a chance to experience both. But, yep. you know, the, the, the WNBA was that, and it is that, that carrot that's dangled in front of little girls who aspire to, you know, to be professional women's basketball players here in our country. Like, right. I look at Asia Wilson, like, she doesn't know life without 
the WNBA. Like she grew up on the right. WNBA. Yep. And because of that, she might play a little bit harder. She might work a little bit harder. She might just, you know, just give more, like dedicate herself mm-hmm. a little bit more because, you know, she knows there's, there's a place for her to continue her career. Yeah, mm-hmm. Definitely. So uh, 1999, you were the ninth overall pick to the Charlotte Sting. Shortly after that, you guys are headed to the NBA or excuse me, the WNBA finals. What was it like? Uh, to be a part of that, you know, obviously being drafted, but then finding success right away. I didn't, they didn't even invite me to the draft. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, it, it was cool. Like, you know, to be a part of a WNBA finals, like in, it, in that particular finals, uh, we started the season like one in 10, like one in 10. And it's a 34 game season. Mm. So, you know, we, we made a move, uh, uh, to to actually even get to the finals, but uh, to be able to play in the finals against you know one of who I think one of one of my most my favorite teammates, a good friend of mine, Lisa Leslie, um, was pretty cool to share in that spotlight with her. Uh, I mean, I, I ended up being on the losing end of the stick, but it was it was cool to share in that moment with her. August first, two thousand five, you was traded to the Houston Comets. And you announced before the season that it'll be your last. Was it? Was the knees talking to you? <laughs> you know, it, it actually wasn't my knees. It was actually my heart. Like really? Yeah. You know, you're. You know, you. I mean, we all go through some type of pain as as players, and right. you know, you 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 develop a, a strong like threshold for pain that you know that's secondary. It, it is, to it. yeah. You, it's your it's your mentality, you know, that can get you over the edge. But I, I actually played in the WNBA one more year than I probably should have, and I only did that because I wanted to get it out of my system. And I was actually coaching and playing at the same time. So, right, right. so I had to get it out of my system so I wouldn't look back. And I I didn't look back at all once I was done. I was tired of working out. Like I was. You know, I was mean. I was mean to my trainer, like mean, mm-hmm. ornery, and I didn't. You know, I didn't feel like getting my body ready to play. I, I didn't. So I was like, "This is it." And and thankfully, I got through. And and I never looked back. I was fortunate that I was already in a profession of coaching and and being a dream merchant for young people. That it. You know, I I transitioned nicely into it. Yeah, you knew you made the right decision. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I and that's crazy because with me, I I thought I'd never stop playing basketball, but you, my body started talking to me, and I like you said, just just preparing with knowing how you prepare to 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 play. You know, I played in the Big Three a couple of years, but but I couldn't do. That. I'm like, man, I, I love the game so much. Let <laughs> me try coaching. You know what I mean? And was able to win the championship. So I. We love the game so much. We might not play no more, but we are gonna stay around the game as long as, as long as we can. That's just what we do. You you was you impacted the w, the WNBA so much that you have the Community Leadership Award named after you. Talk about that. Uh, I mean that's cool. Like really, that that's cool because you know as as athletes, um, we we want certain things. We want to be the best at what we do, and and, and sometimes. Because of that, people see, I mean, they see your heart. They see what you put into it. They see that um, you're a good teammate. They see that you are a great service woman to the game. Mm-hmm. And and they thought so much of that to bestow an award. Like, there aren't very many of them. I think it's me and Kim Parrott. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's another one. I don't know if there's another one, but... Um, that is something that's etched in in the history of the game, mm-hmm. and um, I'm 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 thankful because every year, every summer, I get to go and, and hand out like my award to mm-hmm. someone who's giving back to the community and who are who are leaders and giving back to the community. So, man, that that's 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 super cool. That's mm-hmm. that's really really cool because that's, that's what it's about. Yeah, that's something that you don't, you know, like I wanted to be an Olympian. I wanted to be a national champion. I didn't know that, you know, these awards could, you know, could be something a part of my legacy. 
Who was your toughest matchups when you was in the WNBA? Toughest, um, I mean, Teaspoon. Ooh, Teaspoon, Teaspoon was, you know, used to get after it. You know, yeah. she used to get after it. She used to get Full on my court. nerves. Yeah, she used to get on my nerves. Like, ah. <laughs> 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 but but I look forward to it though. Like, you know, right. we 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 life. had battles. Like, you know, you were gonna get her best. Mm-hmm. And she knew she was gonna get my best. And that's when, you know, you you have lasting memories of that because when you when you can look back on it and say she's the one that that gave you the most trouble. Those are memories because I I don't remember half of the people that I played against because right. they they didn't they never impressed me that much. Right, right. Saying a lot. Who you like watching today in the WNBA? I mean, uh, let's see. Who, my 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 favorite all time WNBA player. She's retired now. Tamika Catchings. Mm-hmm. Um, me but too. I, I like I like to watch our my, you know the kids that I coach. They right. they're grown women now. But Asia, Ty Harris. Um, Elena Coates, Kayla Davis, um, Tiffany Mitchell. Like I, I like to see our the ones that you know I that suited up with with us every day. I like to see their growth and how they how they mature over the years. You got some cold guards over there now too. We got some future WNBA players. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got we some do. Guards. We do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> So you say you don't set many goals. Um, getting an Olympic gold was one of them. What was that moment actually like once you won it? I mean, I, I'm gonna give y'all a story. Like once, once I like once I got it. Like, I mean, I, when I when I go back and look at, I don't look at, but you sometimes they show like little small snippets of us receiving our gold medal on different. Like the you know Olympic Channel and all of that. Um, in '96, when they got to me and they were going to put the gold medal around my neck, I told them to give me mine. <laughs> like I said, give me mine because that was you know that was a lifelong dream. But I'm gonna tell you after that after that moment, I think I got a little depressed mm. because when you when you achieve like a lifelong dream, it's like well, what's next? Like, really, what's next? I know that the ABL was next, but something came over me. Like, I wasn't motivated to do anything. Um, and that was, like, the weirdest feeling that I've, that I, like, it, and it has never happened to me again. That was the only time. But um, my coach um, in the ABL, her name is Lisa Boyer. She actually is is our assistant, our associate head coach here in South Carolina, and she's been with me for the past 20 years. Um, she was my my coach in the ABL. She just gave me some time off before training camp. And that was the time off that I needed to kind of re- rejuvenate and get myself ready to go back at it and, and, and play. You gave your first gold medal to your mom. What was that experience like? I mean, you know, you know how special mothers are. Like, you know, mothers are you know, ones that are there for you on the good, bad, ugly days. And they're the most consistent people. I mean, they're the ones that believe in you. They're the ones that humble you. They're the ones that um, pay for the sneakers, like that you gotta wear, they pay for the clothes. Like, and to be able to give my mother that tangible gold medal, um, it's priceless. It's it's, it's priceless. And I know that, I'm no, I mean, she didn't really want it. I mean, she, she, <laughs> she, she wanted me to have it, you know, but to be able to do that is, you know, I mean, brought tears to her eyes. And there's nothing more than, than gratifying and making your mother proud. Mm-hmm. Nothing like it. Right. Nothing in the world like it. 2004, you're unanimously chosen to carry the Olympic flag during the opening ceremonies. Kid from Philly, what's that like? The GOAT. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna tell y'all the process of uh, of how a flag bearer is voted in. And I was a part of the process. And the process is all the captains of all the teams at the Olympics, we come together in one room and we so bring, how many, not to cut you off, like how many people is that? Yeah, it, it's about 20, 25 people. Okay. Right? So we come together. My, 
my teammates and the men's team, they said, we want you to nominate yourself, right? That's dope. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm in the room with 20, 25 people and everyone brings in candidates for flag bearer. And then we had some other people on the phone and there's nobody in the room that's, that's, that's a candidate besides me. And you, you actually have to discuss each and every person. So, and, and I'm talking about people who have suffered, like they've come back from career ending um, injuries and they come back to compete in the Olympic games. I'm talking people who have, um, they've had cancer and they've beat cancer. And then, and then I have to get up in the room and speak in front of everybody. I, I basically just said, this is what I said. I said, this, this is my third Olympic Games. Um, I'm currently um, the coach at Temple University and I also play in the WNBA. And, um, and I have a foundation, the Dawn Staley Foundation, and I service uh, middle-aged girls in, in North Philly. And, and I'm it. undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was it, right? And then you hear the other candidates and you hear what they're about. And then we say, okay, it's time to vote. So they take a vote for the top five and they come back and they say, they give us the list of the top five. And I was on it and I'm just like, really like, I didn't really compare to what was happening. And then we say, we take a, another vote for the top three. And it's, it's happening this quick. And then I'm, you know, I'm a part of the, the list of three. And I'm really like looking around the room, like really, like is am I being pranked, right? <laughs> and then they, we they we go back and we do another for the for the flag bearer, and they come back and they said it's me. And honestly, I didn't really know the magnitude of it. And I had been a part of three Olympic games, and I, you know, we as the basketball, like it was the dream team. So we always go in last, like. When you when you're going into an Olympic ceremony, like the opening ceremony, like all the other athletes go, and then for the protection of really the dream team, we all and, and we go in last. So I never knew what the flag bearer was because we always went in last. Um, and then our administrator, she met me outside of the room, and I said, "Yeah, Carol, Carol Callen." I said, "They they voted me in as the flag bearer." She was like, "Really?" and and I was like, yeah, like, so I'm like, what now? Like, she, I said, they told me not to tell anybody. She was like, let's, let's get your mom on the phone. Let's call your mom, right? Yeah. So I, I actually told my mom, like, if I didn't know what it was, I know my mother didn't know what it was, but she would soon find out that being a flag bearer means when they say the United States of the Olympics, you know, right. the United States, you're the first one that walks in Ooh. the stadium. Mm. But before that, they said, listen, as flag bearer, you can't dip the flag. You walk in the stadium with a smile, no matter no matter how you're received. Because, you you know, as, as Americans, you, you can get booed, you can get yeah. hissed. You don't even know how you're going to be received. So I said, I can hold it up. I can hold the flag up and I can smile. I can do that part. I can. I understand that assignment. I can. I can do that. But what I didn't know is. When your sport is the flag bearer, you get to come in first. Oh, okay. So change the dream the team, up. yeah, change the order up. And yep. um, it, it was the coolest thing, though. It was by far, like, I equated to, like, a, a royal wedding when oh. I walked into that, 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 that stadium. It was, it, was, it was incredible. Wow. I mean, I've only, I, we've never had a conversation. I've only known you as a fan, as a player, and as a coach, and then how highly Stack speaks of you. But to, to, to hear that you're voted the flag bearer, to hear that there's an award named after you, I mean, that speaks a lot about who you are as a person. Right. And there, there's mm -hmm. not too many solid people out here, so we always want to just salute <laughs> the real ones here. So we, I just wanted to shout you out real quick, man, for just being a solid individual and continuing to motivate not just women but everyone in general. Uh, through your actions, also your words, but most important to me is actions, and, 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 and your actions speak very loudly. So we want to commend you for that. Appreciate it, fellas. Appreciate <laughs> yeah. it. Um, any fun stories while you were there, your team with the guys' team, just Olympics overall, any crazy Olympic stories, funny stories? 
Yeah, I actually got I got one like and it, it and it happened during like one of the one of the opening ceremonies, like when I wasn't a flag bearer. But um, again, we're the last to come in. And you have to understand when you're with the dream team, it, it was a dream team in which Scotty Scotty Pippen was on. So when we come into the stadium and we're the last ones and and when it when the opening ceremony is over, like when it's over. And all chaos occurs because all the other countries want to get pictures with the dream team. Uh, okay. Right? I got smashed. Like I I got smashed. <laughs> I'm sure Scotty Pittman picks me up and, and takes me to safety. He saw me get swallowed. He saw me get swallowed up. <laughs> so it, that was a that was that was a, a cool story to, to, yeah. to share with you all. It was cool. Like uh let me see what other stories that I that I got to share. I, I actually got to see in, in 2000, I got to see one of um, and it's, it's, it's got a little dark cloud because it, um, what's her name? Marion? The, 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 Marion Jones? Jones, yeah. I got a chance yeah, yeah. to see her actually run in the quarterfinals. I mean, we yeah, know what happened after that, but yeah, I, I, I witnessed that. I'm a, I'm a big boxing, mm-hmm. boxing fan, so I actually in 96, I got a chance to see I don't know if y'all know, like David Reed, he's from Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. You know, I got a chance to see him, him fight. He, I don't think he had a, a strong pro career, but I got a chance mm-hmm. to see him fight. So is it cool? That, that, I always wondered that. So you guys can kind of whatever, as long as it doesn't conflict with your actual practice schedule games, but you guys can bounce around and see whatever you want to see. We, we, you can get the tickets to anything. Dumb. Like, mo- I mean, most we we all supported the men's team, but I got. Track and field tickets are hard to get. Um, boxing tickets are a little bit easier to get. Swimming's hard to get, but sometimes you can, you know, you can get lucky and, and get some. But more times than not, you 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 get to see what you can, you know, whatever you want, what what event you want to see. Podcast, you're in the podcast game now. Tell us a little bit about that and why you wanted to start one. Oh, y'all the first ones to know then. I mean, y'all the first one. <laughs> I haven't even unannounced. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> we know everything hey, hey. about you. <laughs> hey, but uh, shit, announce it on here then. What you got? <laughs> I'm not even a talker, so I don't even know how I got talked into doing a podcast. But um, the name of the podcast is uh, Net Life with Dawn Staley. And the Net Life is obviously, you know, sim- the, the, the net symbolizes my basketball, my life. And, mm. and, and, we're, we're, and I'm talking to people that, uh, that's not just basketball. It's pop culture. It is, you know, it's... it's you a sneakerhead? I, I, I am so... You know, I, I don't really consider myself a sneakerhead. You are, though. I am? Yeah. I'll be wild. You know, I follow you. You always post <laughs> some fly kick, so you a sneakerhead. <laughs> I, I, I just like the ones that people can't get. Yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> I, like, I like those. I, I mean, it's like, it's like a competition. Yes, but then, yes. But then when I post them, you got you got the real sneakerheads saying they're fake. <laughs> they, yeah, they just they jealous. They jealous. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm just talking to like I I like I like to figure out what makes the like successful people great. Like yeah. why are they so great in their profession and their fields and and I I just think I I have a voice out there for for women. And I, I, I want to put that on full display because now it's times like like talking makes me uncomfortable. But when you're uncomfortable, growth is taking place. So I always want to grow as a as an individual. And I'm just going to use this platform to, to spread some good news. So if, if someone has, you know, if they're in the field or not, we know what 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 connects great people who are successful and I want people to I want people to eat I want people to be great at what they do and if if words from other people help let me give them the platform to you know to receive their information well, you, you, you also have something that money can buy and that's experience experience is the best teacher and a lot of times that's all people want to hear people ask us all the time give us a story uh, about when you was in the locker room because people will never see those things you know what I'm saying so experience is always the best teacher people people love that when it's all said and done 
Six-time WNBA All-Star, WNBA 10th Anniversary Team in 2006, WNBA 15th Anniversary Team in 2011, Hall of Famer, and more accolades. What are you most proud of? I'm, I'm most proud of being an eyes beater. Because mm. that's, that's the sum of it all. Like, yep. I mean, growing up in the projects, you, you know, people looking from the outside looking in, you, you're not supposed to amount to anything. You, you know, this, the yeah, the odds are stacked against you. So I beat the odds, and I, I'm trying to share and, and 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 help out other people who just need a little ray of hope. And you know, I reach back. Like I also just want to share too. Like I I went back. I went back to my neighborhood. When we won a national championship. I went back to my neighborhood. There's a rec center that I grew up playing. I grew up playing, and it was called the Moreland Recreation Center. That was renamed the Hank Gathers Recreation Center. So I went back there and gave them a, a national championship replica trophy and a and a case. And it is it lives there because that is, you know, as as any young person that walks through those doors, that's the hope. That's the dream to just say, hey, it's a tangible thing to say, hey, you know, that that hard work and that hardware was 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 honed in in these in this gym on these rims in this place. So, so I just like to just just make sure that people that people can come up. Like I am all for people coming up and realizing their dreams and reaching their full potential. That's what's mm -hmm. up. Question, real quick. Um, do you have any? You mentioned hate gathers twice. You have any hate gather stories or just if not stories, how Philadelphia looked at him as a person. Yep. Well, I mean, Hank Gathers was, was the epitome of like hard work. Like you look at him play, he's working harder than any other player. Mm -hmm. um, you know, his tragic death. He he couldn't work as hard as he normally worked. So he took less medicine. Yep. So, you know, he is the epitome of, of, of who we are as Philadelphians and as we blue cloud of workers. We only he only wanted to make it to the league. You know, he was one of them that wanted to make it to the league for his family. And that was cut short. And we don't know why things happened, but certainly his his legacy lives on. And a lot of us um will will never will never forget him. Absolutely. Rest in peace. Uh quick hitters. First thing to come to mind. Let it out. Top five greatest female athletes of all time. You're a top Ooh, five. Good question. Yeah. Jackie Joyner Kersey. Nice. Um, Serena. Teresa Edwards. Flo Jo. Flo Jo. Um, style with it too. You know, before Serena, Steffi Graf was one of my favorites. Yeah. Steffi Graf. Yeah. Wow. yeah I'm dope. tennis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was live. Yep. You gotta know about Steffi Graf. Uh, which album can you listen to on repeat with no skips? <laughs> Anything, Babyface. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> was that how you were? Were you someone? Because I, I, I was mixed. But were you, were you someone listening to like rap, rap, or you, or or R and B? What did you listen to to get you I'm, ready I'm for old, game? I'm old school R and B and gospel, like rap, rap. Mm -hmm. I gotta listen to something I can I can actually understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so rap, rap. Let me see. You know, I somebody told me, and I didn't know this. Somebody told me, you know, the roots is from Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. That they actually said my name in one of their songs. Mm. Actually, the, what you call his father? What's his name? Porter for the Nuggets. Michael uh, Porter. Michael Porter. Yes. Junior. Senior, who was a coach at Missouri on the women's side at first before he went to the men's side when his son, mm -hmm. you know, went to Missouri. He told me that. Okay. Small world. That's what's up. Yep. I gotta go, I gotta go find that song, see what she's talking about. <laughs> Court side to relive relive any game in history, which one would it be? NBA? No, it could be any sport, any game. period. Any game. Any game? In history. Any game. Oh. Sixers, 83 championship. Ooh. 
Courtside, huh? Courtside. Dr. J, <laughs> Mo Cheeks, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Solid. Todd, five dinner guests, dead or alive? Oh, okay, it's a good one. Um, um, Oprah. Oprah would take up the whole conversation, though. Um, <laughs> Princess Diana. Ooh, that's the first. Yep. Um, on uh, Barack. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah, you you guys stunning me with this one. Uh, dead or alive. My mom. Mm, nice. My mom. And um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little younger. I, I met her before though, so I'm not gonna say I was gonna say Serena, but I met Serena before. She was young then. Yeah, I met her at the Olympic Games. I'm gonna say I'm gonna bring Kobe back. Nice. Mm, got to. Mm -hmm. I ain't mad at that. Nice. If you could see any guests or have any guests on All The Smoke, who would it be? But before you answer the question, you have to help us get your answer on our show. Then I, that's a setup. It's a whole setup. I just get So it. you said any guest? Yeah. Any, yep. Whoever you want. Is, who, who do you want to see on the show? Y'all got to go get Serena. Shit. Tiger Woods. Oh, both ones. of them. Both of them. Yeah. <laughs> two good ones. Both do. Two good ones. <laughs> two good ones. Well, Dom, oh, 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 our, our, our research team finest called 100% Dundee is the name, This uh, the song you're on by The Roots. 100% okay. Dundee. So they 100% Dundee. Okay. Check All right. Out. Yeah, so check that out. In the I end. never heard it. I couldn't yeah. find it. He didn't, know, he didn't know the song, but he just said yeah. it. So 100% Dundee. All right. Okay. Again, shout out your podcast, Net Life. Featuring yourself on Just Woman Sports. When will that? Uh, when are you guys drop it? We're dropping. We're dropping. I believe next week. Congratulations! Nice. That's what's up. Next you week. Hey, you need us? Let us know. We'll all be right, we'll always do. down. Always down. Well, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations on all the accolades, coaching, uh, man, a role model again to not just women but people in general. Uh, we'll be checking for you guys, and uh, thank you for your time, Don. Thank you so much, and thank you for all for giving women a platform in the and and what may, many may seem as an all male space. But so I appreciate y'all, fellas. I appreciate you. Thank you. You can check this out on Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform Black Effects. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. Hello. I tell you something I did. Ready? Something bad. Shit runs downhill. Father to son. Father to daughter. It's gonna kill Mickey. It has to end. <laughs>